Hi, Carl Delia. Addiction, the way forward. In the addiction world, there are two models that are nearly the opposites of each other. I will explain where, in my view, the problem lies. The first is called the brain disease model of addiction, that I will refer to as the brain disease model. And the second is the biopsychosocial model. Let's briefly look at the history of both. The brain disease model, derived from Galileo's, Newton's and Descartes assumptions that the whole could be understood by the parts and the notion that the body is like a machine and can be repaired by a doctor. Many people over the years contributed to the brain disease model and currently the US National Institute on Drugs is the main authority that promotes the brain disease model. The brain disease model focuses on biological processes in the brain that, in their view, require medical drug interventions to treat the brain. They do take environmental and social factors into consideration, but they believe it is due to changes in the brain and the release of dopamine. So to recap, the brain disease model is a model that says everything happens in the brain and does not believe in any holistic approach. The biopsychosocial model was coined by psychiatrist George Engel and is based on dualism, where the mind is separated from the body. The essence of the biopsychosocial model is that both the mind and body have an influence on addiction and that the brain is one part of the whole. The psychosocial part of this model started with Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung and today there are many branches. Some will be discussed later on, but let's first answer a few questions. Does the mind reside in the brain? Aristotle argued that perception and thought were in the heart and not the brain. Heart math in the US research shows heart brain transmissions and receptions and that the heart functions as a homing magnetic center. Science has now started to show that the body speaks via biophotons to human energy fields surrounding our body. Also, no neuroscientist has found the mind in the brain and many argue that the reason for this is that the mind is one of the layers in our human energy field. You cannot see a radio wave, but yet we know it carries data. This is the same with the human energy fields around our bodies. So for example, your brain is like a mobile phone. We all know that the sound does not come from the mobile phone. What percentage of addicts naturally recover? I did a diploma in addiction, and an important point I discovered is the famous Vietnam study. 20% of US soldiers in Vietnam got addicted whilst there, and within one year of being back in the US, this percentage dropped to only 1%. Therefore, the Vietnam study of 495 US service personnel showed only 5% of addicts cannot naturally cure themselves. But critically, to achieve this, 95% of soldiers change their environment to accomplish this. So the importance of this is that most addicts can naturally cure themselves once they move into a different environment and where social pressures are removed. What role does stigma play? Many addicts avoid treatment due to the stigma attached to it and not having the money for professional help. 
Studies show that most addicts favor the brain disease model that points to the reason for addiction being a medical one inside the brain. Addicts like this approach because it points to addiction not being their mistake. The problem with this view is that addicts then want medication to resolve the problem that they see in the brain. But as we have seen from the Vietnam study, 95% of the soldiers reverse their drug addiction by moving to a different environment with less social pressures. So improving the environment and conditions when a person is a child is the way out and not more drugs. Prevention is better than cure. What treatment is proposed by both models? On the brain disease model side, the US National Institute on Drug Abuse promotes medical drugs as treatment. So they treat drugs with more drugs. Interestingly, however, they do support behavioral treatment methods we discussed later, but they believe that the changes all happen in the brain. Engel's biopsychosocial model promotes treatments ranging from Sigmund Freud's and Carl Jung's psychoanalysis, where you go back to childhood to find out what transpired and look at dreams, etc., and then fix it. Then there are literally hundreds of other methods that evolve from Freud and Jung, and I will discuss the recent three waves of behavioral methods that are used. The first wave of behavioral methods. This is where John Watson came into contact with Pavlov's famous work on dogs, linked to sounds and behavior. Watson's Little Albert experiment took things further many years later, where a nine-month-old child was conditioned to fear a rat by striking a metal bar with a hammer whenever Albert touched the rat. Therefore, after the conditioning, the rat itself was enough to make Albert fearful. So, behavioral therapy is putting the above into reverse gear and, via therapy, removing certain fears from an addict. The second wave is cognitive behavioral therapy, called CBT for short. CBT, in its simplest form, says that an addict's emotions and behaviors are influenced by the perceptions of events. Therefore, the way people feel is determined by how they interpret situations rather than the situation per se. CBT aims to alleviate distress by assisting patients through developing more adaptive behaviors. The third wave was declared in the early 2000s and took CBT further. A new set of behavioral and cognitive approaches were emerging based on contextual concepts, focusing more on the patient's relationship to thought and emotion than on their content. These include acceptance and commitment therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy, mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, functional analytic psychotherapy, meta-cognitive therapy, and several others. What research backs up treatment success for the brain disease model? The brain disease uses animal models and imaging studies to back up their medical drug treatment programs. As mentioned before, the brain disease model also supports a broader range of behavioral treatment, but views it as all taking place in the brain. The brain disease model, that is the medical model for research, needs instruction manuals for clinical trials.
What research backs up treatment success for the biopsychosocial model? One study showed a success rate of 43% for cannabis addiction, 61% for cocaine addiction, 81% for alcohol addiction, and 92% for heroin addiction. So the biopsychosocial model has numerous studies that show that fixing things during childhood or changing a person's behavior works. But here is the problem. The brain disease model does not accept the biopsychosocial model research because there is no clinical trials research. To carry out clinical trials, you need instruction manuals. But for Freud's and Jung's work, it is impossible to produce manuals. So what is the way forward? Three things. Number one, science is starting to show that the brain is not the only place where the mind resides. And I call on young scientists to take this research forward as it is 100% provable according to the spirit book. Number two, we need to provide better environments for children to grow up that are rich in love and affection. Number three, we need to provide quicker and more out of the box ways to treat drug and alcohol addicts. And I call on those that are serious about kicking your addiction to sign up for this free study by going to onesouls.co forward slash world peace addiction. Yes, it is all free. <laughs>